Close your eyes and watch your breath. And watch your mind at the same time. comes in what's called the third tetrad in the Buddha's instructions of breath meditation, is being sensitive to the mind and then figure out what the mind needs. Does it need to be gladdened? Does it need to be steadied? Does it need to be released? Sometimes it's easy for the mind to settle down with the breath and there are no problems. Other times there are problems. You've got to figure out what's wrong. An important principle is learning how to gladden yourself when the practice starts getting dull, when you start getting bored. And there are lots of different ways of doing that, because that's the only way you're going to keep with the practice. And if it starts getting dull, starts getting down, then you're going to give up. But if you can find ways of keeping your energy up, keeping your spirits up, looking on the bright side of things, that nourishes the practice. Sometimes you change the topic of your meditation for a while. Think about the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. Think about your generosity, think about your virtue, something that find, gives the mind a sense of uplift. But also look at the stories you're telling yourself as you go through the day. There's a passage in the novel Joseph and His Brothers by Thomas Mann, where Joseph is being sent off to the prison, and the person in charge of the boat who's taking the Joseph to the prison is upset because Joseph is not depressed, not down like most prisoners should be. He seems to be in a really good mood. So he complains to Joseph. Why aren't you depressed? And Joseph says, I'm making a big story out of this, a good story. Maybe going to prison is part of a larger plan. And so I'll be ready for whatever comes. And of course, he is able to take advantage of the situation in the prison and get himself out by his ability to keep himself entertained. So learn how to entertain yourself as you practice. Have good stories about what's happening. If there are difficulties, tell yourself a story that you're the sort of person who meets with difficulties and is not overcome by them. You can find a way around them. When you find yourself feeling down, tell yourself a story. Okay, you're able to find ways of lifting your spirits. Finding what's humorous in this situation. I have a student in Thailand, he's a monk who likes to put himself in difficult situations and has great stories to tell afterwards. And I think he's telling himself the story as he goes through the difficulties to make it something worth doing. And he learns from that, at the same time keeps his spirits up in spite of some really strong difficulties. So do what you can to keep your spirits up. That's an important skill in gladdening the mind, which keeps you giving you the energy you need to practice. You can't depend on your energy from outside all the time. You have to find sources within. And so look at the narratives you're telling yourself. Sometimes they're depressive narratives. Okay, change the storyline. Give it an upbeat ending, or at least an upbeat uh, trajectory. And that way you'll find that what seem to be large difficulties can actually be, seem, become quite small. And even if they are large, you find you can survive them. You have the intelligence, you have the cleverness to get around them. Make that part of the story, too. <laughs>